Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyim Yizvachim. Daf Samachay, we begin right at the uh, beginning of the, of the Gemara. So right after the, uh, the Mishnah, it's around 15 lines off the top of the Ahmed. Tonor Rabban Vikrivoy. We shift over to the Oilas Ho'if. So the, uh, the bird oiler, where the Pasuk already says, V'hikriv min ha-toyrim, oi min b'nei ha-yoyna, he'll bring his, his birds. Why repeat? Why again? V'hikrivo ya-koyin elam esbeach. What's the point of this repetition? Tanar abon, v'hikrivo ya-koyin elam What's the point? The answer is, L'vishan amar, in order to avoid a, a misunderstanding. Since it already says, V'hikriv min ha-toyrim, that's plural, Lashen Rav and birds, I would think perhaps one who decides to donate a bird, it must be at least a pair of birds, two. Comes the pasuk and says lashon yachid, singular. Even one bird works. Now the pasuk could just say Why hakoyin What's the point of adding the word hakoyin? Elam is beach. It could have said, Mata Maloimar, why add the word Hakoyin? Lik Boya Likoyin. To establish that the Malika, which is the removal of the head of the bird, can only be done through a coin. Says the Gemara. Why is that necessary? Because I would think otherwise. Maybe even a non coin can do Malika, just like, you know, the Shrit of a, a Behema, a Karim Behema. Shrit is kosher. Even through a czar, through a non kain a Yisrael can do perhaps a malika of a bird as well. Shiachal, I would think, validinu, based on a logic, based on a kavachemer, I can allow even a Yisrael to do malika. Uma bin soin, even a an animal carbon, a sheep, shakavalei tzofin, which has an advantage in a way, because it has to be processed on the tzofin side of the azara only. So it has that you know, superiority. Still, like Kabbalah, like Kain, turned it not. It turned it not. Insist that a Kain does the Shechita. Even a Yisrael can do it. Certainly an Eifah bird. Which seems to have more options to begin with. Shalai Kabbalah, like Tzafin. Which was not limited to Tzafin, right? As we learned yesterday. You can do Malik anywhere. Ein Odin Shalik, but Kain, certainly, I would think, a Kain is not required for the Malika. Tam Aleimar Lakayin comes to the and says, No. They take out the word L. Only a coin. Lik boy Lakayin. Only a coin can do Malik. Okay. So once that's uh, been set down, how about, how, how do they do Malik? How do they go about it? Only with a, uh, with a coin's thumbnail, or perhaps even by way of a knife. Yochel, Yom Lakayin Abbasak, and perhaps he can do it with a knife. Vidinu, and I would think uh, again based on a kavachemer that you do it with a knife. Why uma bin im shchit shalei kava lakoyin? Because since even shchita, which as we just said, does not necessarily need a koyin, but it needs a kli, it needs a knife. Kava loy kli, right? No koyin, but yes kli. How do we know? Says Rashi. We learn from the words Vayikachesamacheles, way back from Avram Avinu. Vayakedas Yitzchak, right? Vayikachesamacheles. You see, Shkita has to be done with a knife. Kavala luckily, certainly Malika Shakavala Koyin. By Malika, where the standards are higher, we need only a Koyin. Ain no din sheik balakli. Certainly, a Kli is required. Tamalei ma Koyinu Malak. Amar Bakiva. This is all Rokiva speaking now. The Pasuk says, Vikrivoi, Hakoyin, Elamazbech, U Molak. Who does the Malika? The Kayin. Says Rabbi Kiva, well, obviously, we're speaking, you know, on the Mizbech here, right? Obviously, it's a Kayin. Who else goes on the Mizbech if not a Kayin? So this seems to be, you know, unnecessary. Why mention the Kayin? It's obvious. 
Can you even entertain the notion that a non kohen kerev will approach the Mizbeah? So, why even mention the kohen? It's redundant. So, what's the point of mentioning a kohen to tell you? You need the actual kohen for the Malika act. His fingernail. The Malika has to be done. But we have the kohen's personal self, his fingernail. Okay, so it's a kohen, his fingernail. What about location? By the mizbeach, by the top, perhaps uh, by the bottom. The ochal him lokena bein malamala bein lamata. Perhaps he can do the malika, but the mizbeach, whether by the top part of the mizbeach, by the lower half of the mizbeach's wall. Tamaloyim amalek vehikter. So back back to the same pasuk that we're learning all along. Umalek is roisha vehikter hamizbeach. He does malika, proceeds to haktara. Mahaktara, just like. The burning act of the oil bird takes place where? On top of the Mizbech, on the fire. But Reisha Mizbech, Af Malika, likewise the act of Malika, Reisha Mizbech, takes place near the top of the Mizbech. Okay, so you know it's a coin, his fingernail, thumbnail, and near the top of the Mizbech, near the Mokim Haktar. Where exactly in the bird is Malika done? Umalak, Mimulayrev. So at the, the back of the, of, the, of the neck, opposite the back of the head. So you have the back of the head, and below that is the back of the neck. Oyrev is the back of the head, Mimul Oyrev opposite that. Ato Oymir, you're suggesting that it's the back of the neck, Mimul Oyrev. Oyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeyeye
Mizbeach at the uh, mid height, you know, point. So where about do we do the Malik? Next to the upper, uh, the um, the the mitzui, right? The uh, trickling of the, the application of the blood. Upper part of the wall or lower portion? Ve'ez says you're kira elyon, the upper portion. Oh yeah, no yellow kira tachan perhaps. And the lower part of the wall. Why would I say so? Perhaps I can derive that through a kalva chaymer. Ve'dinu ma behema shachatas alamal. Look, even by the animal carbonates, where the chatas goes upstairs. You apply the blood to the four corners that stick out of the mezbeach on top. Despite having that upstairs advantage, nevertheless, when it's an oil animal, it goes downstairs. A little asalasa lamata near the yisoid, right? Certainly by the bird animal, by the bird carbonates, oiv shachatos lamata, where the chatas goes below the marker, as we learned yesterday. Certainly, wouldn't you think the oil goes as down below as well? In addition, shalasa lamata doesn't belong upstairs. Tamalim amalek vehikter v'nim tzadami. Back to this pasuk, vayikra. Perak Allah Pasak Tesva, which concludes with the words Umalak, right? So we connect. Umalak, then comes Vihikter, then Vinim Tsadami. In that order. How could you Malika Akhtara and then address the blood? The blood is gone, it's burnt. How could you entertain? This uh, this sequence of events, it seems out of order. Lachash of Hikter, after he did the actor, it's burned. It's incinerated. It's gone. Choyzer matzah, come back and do mitzi. Obviously not. Ella. So what what then is the point of the pasuk? By sort of presenting it in this sequence, it's not meant to describe the actual sequence. Ella rather learned to teach you that they're connected. We connect the actor to the mitzi. I should say the mitzvah to the actor. Wherever the actor takes takes place, so does the mitzvah, and that's why it says actor and then mitzvah. Connect the mitzvah back to actor. Ma actor. But Rosh Hashanah just like actor takes place on top, of course, on the fire. Af mitzvah, but Rosh Hashanah likewise the mitzvah towards the top of the wall. Okay, so how's he go about doing this? Right? How you live kind of climb up the big ramp. Take a sharp right to the mini ramp over to the soivev, which was that ledge encircling sort of the midpoint of the mizbech. Actually, it's right above the midpoint. So the mizbech was a total of 10 high. Midpoint was at 5. That was the chuta sikra. Now, actually, an amma above that was this soivev, this ledge, this walkway around the mizbech. So technically, The, the ledge was still an amma above that midway point. So the midway point began an amma below that ledge, all the way up to the top of the Mizbech. Okay. He would climb up the Kevish, off to the Sevev. Ubalai, make that right turn. To which corner? Ubalai, the Keren, Ramis Mizrachis, to do the Eula Sevev. He would do the Malika, back of the neck, completely sever the head. Uramatsa. Medomal came resbeach and do that squeezing and trickling of the blood against the wall of the mezbeach, the upper part of the wall, right? Now, im osalav matam raglov, if he decided to bend down below his feet and apply to the wall of mezbeach, the portion below that ledge, like we said, you know, you have an amma of leeway until you hit the 50, uh, you know, uh, the halfway point. Even, you know, an amma below. You're still okay because you're still above the midway point, Kshera. That's the Tanakhama Shit. However, in Nechemya, Rabbi Lezim and Yaakov, they disagree. You can't go below the ledge. Kol Atzma Einas is Elbereish HaMezbech. If you do it on the top of the Mezbech, towards the top, might be nice. What's the Machlech, what's the, uh, the difference of opinion based on? Why would you not be able to do it Along that amma below his legs. Abai Varava. The Amri Tabai, they both explained. You see, how do we even know? The Mitsu takes place in that upper portion, as we just learned, because it connects to Haktara, which is upstairs. 
Now, interesting question. Could you actually make an Akhtar? This is a theoretical question. Could you make Akhtar on that ledge? Decides to make a fire and burn something on that ledge. Is it considered like the top service of the Mizbeach? And if the answer is yes, that would explain why you can apply the blood nearby. Because it's near the Makim Akhtar. It's Tanakama Shita. The other Shitas disagree. You can't make a fire. That's not top of the Mizbeach, even though it's a horizontal service. It's not suitable for Akhtar. So placing the blood around there is not good. You have to place it closer to the top, along the portion which runs up to the top of the Mizbech only. They will explain. The question revolves around whether you can make a Marach Al-Gabi Seva on this ledge. That's the point of contention. And the Kama says, yep. And that enables that portion of the wall as well for of the Saif. And they say no. Okay, so the Eilah Saif process Entails a coin doing malika ba atzme shel coin mimul oiref complete havdala and the uh, mitzoy is on the upper portion of the wall of the mizbeach. But the guf mishnah continues to describe the process of the oilas oif hakrov. He approaches the body of the of the bird and removes the undesirables, the impurities, the crop, the the the, the intestines. That's the crop. Perhaps he uses a surgical knife and sort of makes a little window, tunnels into the uh, bird and pulls out the uh, the crop, leaving the um, covering, you know, skin and, and feathers intact, leaving it in place. So he just takes the innards and leaves the top. Takes along the feathers as well, the skin and the feathers. Here's a different definition of the word noitza. Instead of feathers, it means it means most disgusting, something dirty, and it means to say not only the crop, also the kurkavan, the beginning of the intestines. So that's what it means. They have a different shot. Noitza so means noitza shallah. He takes a zephik. With uh, you know the skin above it, with the feathers, but only that precise section of, of skin. So he cuts precisely around the zephic area with the skin and pulls it out. He bores it out with a, a knife, came in a ruba like a little window, ensuring that it only takes that much. She simply hips it, takes the uh, the bird and sort of crushes it between its wings, but doesn't actually split it into two. Turn around bottom. Vishisa means ain't shisa el biyad. Do by hand. As it says by Shimshan, when he ripped a line to pieces. By shaseu, you just ripped it. Kishasak did like one would do to a, a, a goat. So it's done manually. Now the one distinctive feature that sets the Chata's bird apart from the Eula bird is how, is how to do the Malika. Full or partial? The Malika of an Eula is with Havdala. He severs both Simonim, the windpipe and the food pipe. Complete separation. Whereas by the Chata's, it says Lo you don't separate. He only severs one of these Simonim, leaving the other one intact. So he cuts through the... Um, Spinal cord, the, the uh, neck bone, and over to one simon with the uh, surrounding basa with the flesh, but not the second simon. What happens if he did a full malika of the chatas? The mission says it's uh, actually possible because uh, you, you applied an oila process, an oila malika of the chatas. We have a dissenting view. That allows it through. Masnis is now Mishnah, which says that a full havdala, a full malika, done to a chatas, disqualifies it. The loy is unlike the opinion of Kerbalaz Rishim. The sign of Kerbalaz Rishim. Shemat, I heard from my teacher. Shemat, dilam chatas oif. If one did a full malika by the chatas oif, it's okay. It's kosher. Tanakama disagrees. It might be nice. What's the uh, Machleik is based on what's the root of this disagreement. So, 
before we begin, I want to know uh, the uh, the underlying premise here would be that if you would apply an oil process to a chatas, that disqualifies the chatas. But if there's any way to, to consider it a regular chatas process, to avoid labeling this process as an oil process, then you're saved. And the chatas is kosher. That would be the point of Machlekes. Again, if you apply an oil process to the chatas, it's no good. A chatas needs a chatas process, which is distinctive from the oil process. But if there's any way to still identify it as a chatas, that would save the day. So when he did a full malika to the chatas, you would think that's possible because this is an oil type of process. But if there's any way to still identify it as a chatas, for instance, By the chatas, you do malika, followed by hazo'a, spraying of the blood straight from the animal or the bird to the mizbech. And then phase three is mitzui, squeezing the bird to the wall of mizbech and having the blood shrivel. The oila entails malika and just mitzui. Now, in this case, where he did a full malika to the chatas. So, in a way, that's the oila process done to the chat, would disqualify. But one second, let's say he skips. The mitzvah of the chattas. If you would do the mitzvah of the chattas, so in a way you can say the full oil process was done to the chattas. The malika was an oil type of malika, and the mitzvah, which is also something done to an oil. So this has now been relabeled as, a, as an oil. But if you can skip the, uh, the mitzvah, just skip it. Perhaps it's not me'akiv. Let's see. Maybe it's not me'akiv. That would save the day. Because he never really completed an oil procedure to the chattas. Although the malika was an oila type of malika, but he never proceeded to the mitzi, which is a requirement by the oila, which is critical by the oila. He hadn't done it to the chattas. He skipped that part. So it remained chattas. It maintained its identity. And it would be kosher. So that would be the machlekes. Tanakhama says, you can't skip the mitzi. There's no way. So inevitably, if you do the mitzi, you have really completed the oila process to the chattas. You've done the malika like an oila and the mitzi, which is also relevant to the oila. We did a trachatas, uh, it becomes sort of relabeled as an oil. Whereas Rabbi Lezer Rashim would hold, you know what? In this case, that he did a, a faulty, he did a full malika to the chatas, which he shouldn't have. It's not yet been relabeled as an oil. Just skip the mitzi, which is a very critical element of the oil process. If you haven't done the mitzi to the chatas, so you haven't really completed the oil procedure to the chatas, it stays chatas. My benai, Omar Chizda, mitzi. The question is whether it's critical to do mitzvah by the chata soif. And kama sofer, it's critical. You have to do it. So inevitably, you've just completed the oil process to the chata. So it's possible. Mitzvah chata soif ma'akiv. The chiba the mitzvah dam. Bach adds the word ma'akiv since it's critical. It's essential to the process. So he has to do it. No way out. Ka'avid ma'asa oil b'chata soif. So in a way, he completed the oil procedure. He did a, a full malika, like an oil, and B, the mitzui, which applies to an oil as well. He did it, but chata soif, so it's possible. Rabbi Shema Sever, no, he says, you just skip the mitzui. If you mistakenly did a, 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 a full malika, like an oil, just skip the mitzui. Don't do it to the chatas. See, I'm really completed the oil procedure, you're still good. Rabbi Shema Sever, mitzui, chata soif, loy ma'akav. You know what, skip the mitzui. So you haven't really completed the oil process. And the fact that you did a, a full malika, big deal. Just ignore it. It's like he's cutting extra flesh. It's like cutting extra, extra flesh. Just disregard it. Okay, so again, ideally, by a partial malika is done. If you did a full malika, Tanakhama says, puzzle. Why? Explains Rav Chizda, because you have to finish the process all the way to the mitzvah. In which case, he did a full, technically, he did a full oil process to the chatas, a full malika and a mitzvah, which is done to an oil as well. The other shita says, no. You can get away without mitzvah. Just skip the mitzvah. In which way, he, he didn't really complete the oil process. So it stays a chatas. That's from Chizis Pshat. Rav Amar, here comes another Pshat. 
And again, the point is, can we avoid being swept along into the Eula procedure? Can we still keep it as a Chattas? In which case it's kosher or, or not. Okay, so now we get involved in something called shihiyah. We know that by uh, a typical shechita of an animal, where you have to shech both simonim, or most of both simonim, majority, right? You have to do it continuously, without any delay, procrastination, or pausing in the middle. That would be considered shihiyah. Shihiyah disqualifies a shechita. Now, as we explained by the bird, Eilas Sa'if, when they do the malika, which is like a form of shechita, they cut through both simon. And it's done continuously, without any pausing, from one to the next. There's no issue there, right? Now, by the chatas, if we're going to see later, the procedure required a pause. He cuts through one simon, and then cuts through the flesh, the buser around it. That's the way it has to be done that way. That's the way it's done. So even if he went and proceeded and did another simon, a full malika like the ayla, it's still a little different than the ayla. Because whereas the ayla doesn't have a pause between the simon, it's continuous. It's a simultaneous. Here, inevitably, there's going to be a pause, a break, a progress, a delay between one simon and the other. So the question is, can that second uh, a simon connect to the first simon? Is it one continuous act? Oh no, it's too late. It's like you're just cutting away some uh, irrelevant material. Because the act of Malika or Shkita had been terminated, had stopped. Done deal. Once he stopped and started cutting the basur around. If that's the case, if it's considered Shehiyah, which terminates the Shechita or Malika process. So even if he did continue on and eventually cut the second simon and the Chata Saif, no harm was done. It's out of the Shechita process. It's done. It's over with. It's not reckoned with. So that's if you hold Shehiyah by the, uh, by the Eula, by the, by the bird, is detrimental. If it is, so once that shahiya happens, and it happens inevitably by the chattas, because he has to do the cutting of the basur after the first simon. So, so the show's over, the malik is over, we disregard any further cutting, no harm was done. But if you say that shahiya by a bird is not, is not uh, consequential, Rashi explains because by the animal, there's a, a greater measure of life to it. It has a bigger chius, and that's exactly why the shahiya is different than a uh, the animal shechita is different than a bird shechita. But the animal you need to cut through both simonim to, eat, to make it, you know, kosher. Because the chiyos is only removed. The life force is only terminated by cutting through both simonim. It has a stronger life force, but by a bird, which has a weaker life force to begin with, severing one simon is enough, is sufficient to end its life. So perhaps, once he did one simon, even if he now waited, took his time, shechita is not... Uh, it's not an issue. All right, so the fact that the Eulah, he meant to cut the second simon, it's uh, not necessarily part of the, the shechita, part of the malika. It's just a halacha, you have to do the second simon as well, you have to completely sever. All right, so if that's the case, then if he did it, did it by the chatas, it would be considered like a ma'isa oila. Even though it involves waiting. Waiting is not an issue. We ignore the wait. So he did malika on one simon, waited around, did the basr, then completed the next simon. Inevitably, it's, it's the oila procedure done to the chatas. That would disqualify the chatas. So that's what the machlaikas is based on. Again, the question is, if he did a full malika, full meaning both simon about the chata soif, Tanakama says, Pasal. Rosh Hashimah says, Kasha, why? What's it based on? Based on a question of shahiyah. In Elchashchita. 
delaying between the two simana by a bird. Is that critical or not? Tanakama says it's not an issue. Even though the Eilus Oif requires severing both simon, you can wait in between because the Malika technically was done by the first one. It's, it's finished. Life force is out. You can wait around and then complete the second sim. So likewise by the Chata Oif, we actually did that delay. It's inevitable. He has to do the sim and then cut the buster, then proceed. It's still going to be an oil procedure done to the Chatas, which disqualifies the Chatas. Vagav gav to Shahaya, even though he waited. Ka'avad masa oil b'chatas. Inevitably, he's doing an oil method to the Chatas. And that's disqualifying. However, was of Shimon Sovar Ma'akev, he says, waiting around between both Simonim disqualifies the Malika. And by the oil of the Malika is continuous from beginning to end without interruption, without delay. And since by the Chatas he delays, that's not a proper oil uh, Malika done to the Chatas. It's not disqualifying. Since he waited in between, so although he continued and cut the second sim, it's like just cutting away flesh. It's irrelevant. We disregard it. It's not part of the halachic malika process. And it's okay. Abai Amar here a little different twist connected to the uh, to this pshat, but a little bit of a different twist. He says perhaps both opinions would hold that. Shehia is disqualifying. But the question is, that in itself, did, was there a, a delay by the Chata Soif? Or was there not? We're assuming that he has to cut through the, the, the buster between the Simon. Maybe not. And if not, and he did it continuously, then it's a proper Malika like an Oila. And that would be disqualifying, right? Abayi Rav Amar Roiv Basar, this uh, requirement to cut through the uh, the Roiv Basar, the, the, the you know the, the flesh there, most of the flesh, between the first and second simon Ma'akev, is that critical? That's the point of Machlekes. That's the basis of the disagreement. Tanakama says it's not critical to cut through that Basar. So if in fact he did a continuous Malika, not with, with that any. Basar in between the two simon. Continuous malika from one simon to the other by the Chathos Oiv. That's an Oilas Oiv malika that's disqualifying. Reb Lezer. Shimon holds you have to do the Basar in between. So by default there's going to be a Shehiyah. That's not a proper uh, continuous uh, malika reminiscent of the Oilas Oiv. So uh, you're safe. Ubi Plukta Reb Zer Reb Shmuel Reb Yitzchak. These last two explanations, Rav and Abaya actually um, proposed by other uh, Amorim as well. Rav Zera had one pshat, versus Rav Shon Ritzhak had the other pshat. Chadam one explained the, uh, the Machlekes as being connected to the Shehiyah question. Shehiyah b'sim and shem b'el sa'if ma'akib ibn'ayu. That was Rav's pshat. But Chadam had one explained like Abaya. Rav Basa ma'akib ibn'ayu. The question is whether he has to cut through the flesh after the first simon, like Abai. Now it seems like all agree that preferably you have to cut through the uh, the flesh there between the you know after the first simon. In yeah, Batani as we learned. Nebraisa, Keitad Molkin Chalatas Oif. How does he go about doing Malika by Chalatas Oif? Chaytech Shedra. First he cuts through the spinal cord, Mafrekas, and the neck bone, blade Basar without touching the uh, the flesh there. Atzim Megillah Veshed Elokan until he approaches either the food or windpipes. Cuts through one of them, he gave Levesh to the Kana Chaytach Simon Echad, most of it, and then the flesh around it. Very Basim, most of the flesh. He cuts through both Simonim, Shnai Mere Shnai, as we explain. So, again, regarding a full Malika done to a Chatas Oif, Sanakam says Puzzle, because that's an Oila method done to a Chatas. Rabbi Lazar Shimon disagrees, it's okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be considered an Oila process, because you can skip the Mitzui. There's a Shehiya, etc. Amr Rab Kamei Rab Yirmiya. So the Chachamim presented this, uh, you know, whole discussion, this explanation to Rab Yirmiya to uh, explain Rab Lezer Shimon's reason for um, 
accepting this chata uh, soif, which was fully severed. So it's based on the question of, uh, you know, hilchas shechita, shehiya, etc. Omar, he responded with surprise. He says, why do we have to go look for new uh, explanations? There's a very simple, straightforward reason. Why would be kashu? Lishmiyelu, who didn't they hear? Ha, don't rush on Yaakim Shum. He quoted a lezer and pedas. Mishum who quoted a lezer and shama. Are you mahir of a lezer? Shim, you know why a lezer Shim would say? Shamati, I heard from my teachers. Bechadus shmatila, you could do havdala full malika bechadus oif, and it's okay. You know why? Shamati, shmatila, because you can do that as well. It's not just uh, you know. After the fact, you can do it lachatchil if you want. Nobody says you can't do a full malika b'chata say umay lo yado. Although Hatter does say don't do havdala, don't do a full malika. Doesn't mean you can't. You don't need to. In contrast to the oila sa'if, which requires a full malika, chatas doesn't need. Ain't zarech la havdala. Amalei rav acha be the rav That's the machlekes, right? He says you don't have to. Tanakama says la havdala means you can't, and it is disqualifying if you do. Amalei rav acha be the rav According to this uh, definition of the word loy, el amiata. So take a look at the uh, in Baba Kama, right? Amiata gavay bar. Take a look at the aloch of a fellow who dug a pit in the street. Chesiv it says v'loy chaseno. He dug it in the street. He didn't cover it. Hachanami here too. It means he's not allowed to cover it. Now protect your pit from passing by falling in. Hachanami, uh, sorry. Hachanami means loy chaseno means he doesn't have to. Hachanami they ain't zarech chasas. Loy means you don't need to do it. Of course, how can you actually compare the two stories? Awesome. Even the over there, since the pasuk says you're responsible, apparently you have to cover it. it says if an animal falls in, balabar who has to pay? Who's responsible? The uh, the owner of the pit, balabar yishalim, iluya on him who the rami the chasuye apparently the chasuye the the covering. Is Eliyahu the Rami? Is it incumbent upon him? Pretty obvious from the context of the Pasuk, he's responsible. Of course, he has to cover it. So, certainly, the word Vlay Chaseno doesn't mean he doesn't have to. Vlay Chaseno over there means he failed to cover it, right? As he should have. But over here, Avalachab Abadiya, Eila Sa'if, look, it already says, Michti, take a look. See if it says Vikrivoy. Once it says Vikrivoy, Bimakri, him. Indicating that the oil is different than the other, than the chatas. That already teaches us. That the chatas has a different procedure than the oil. In contrast to the leak of the oil, which is a complete one, the chatas is incomplete. Only one simon, not two. Now, why, if so, does the Pasuk gum repeat again by the chatas oil? Lo yavdo, don't separate. To tell you, you don't. You, you could. You don't need. to. Well, Yavdal is sort of a repetition. Well, Yavdal, I didn't mean you can't. Normally, what's the point of this expression? Shmamin to tell you, ain't zerach lahamdal. You don't need to, fully sever. But if it was done, it's fine. Okay. So in a nutshell, ideally the oilas malika is complete. Both simanim are severed by the chatas. It's only one. He did a complete malika by the chatas. Tanakam says pasul. Rosh Hashim says kash. We have four ways to explain the machlekes. First three explanations were based on a premise that you can't do the oila process to the chatas. But if there's any way to give it to maintain some distinguishing uh, features of, of the chatas process. By deflecting the oil you know, procedure in any way, like skipping something which is critical to the oil process, like mitzvah, or doing shehia, that would salvage the uh, the carbon. That's what Lezer Shimon Shita. And the final shot of Yemriah was based on the uh, definition of the part of the word Layavl. Going down the comment says uh, it means you can't. If you did it, it's possible. Going to Lezer Shimon, you don't need to. But if it was done, it's okay. Okay, one more piece. Mitzvah Damakov. So he did the Malika of the uh, Eila bird, bird, and then he uh, is about to do meat, so squeezing the, the bird to the wall in his beach. And now, as we explained, there are two parts, the Rosh and the Guf. He did the Mitzi on the Guf, but not on the Rosh. Mission says it's okay. He did the Mitzi on the Rosh, not on the Guf, it's possible. 
the Pasuk says, Oila, Oila hu ishei reich nechayich l'ashem. So the word Oila is telling you, Afu bishem mitzah dama guf, v'oi mitzah dama roish. That even if you just uh, address the blood and the body of the of the bird and not the head, it's okay. It's still okay. It's still an oila. Yochel mitzah dama roish, v'loy mitzah dama guf. Perhaps the other way around too. If he did mitzah on the on the roish, not on the guf, it's okay. Tamulay mahu. Pasa continues oila hu. A limiting t- uh, expression to tell you only this way, not that. My tamud. How do you know which way to go? Amravina mistavra. It's logical to say that. You know, the, the body is more critical than the head. Why? Most of the blood is present in the body of the of the bird, so the mitzvah on that part is critical, as opposed to the mitzvah of the rosh. Okay, so in summation, we learned about the the malika of the elas oif, done by a kain only, personally with his uh, fingernail uh, near the rosh uh, hamizbeach. The mitzvah takes place on the upper part of the uh, wall of Mizbech as well. Um, we learned about the uh, removal of the Meiru Asai, Benayt Sasa, various ways of doing it. Shis of Elay Hivdil. If he did a full Malik on the Chatas Oif, Machlekes, four ways, four ways to explain. And the mitzvah of the Guf, which is Mi'akiv, but not the mitzvah of the Rish. Hadron Lach, Kadesh Ekachem. All the best to you and much at